Hello, uh, my name is Colin Davidson. I'm the president of the college and I'm really delighted to be joined by uh, David O'Sullivan. Uh, David is the chief optometric advisor to the to the Welsh government and um, we really want to spend some time and just uh, catch up on what's been happening and what's been a, a, an incredibly challenging and uh, difficult time for, for the profession. So, um, David, uh, it would be really great if you could just uh, tell us a little bit about your, your background and uh, the kind of work that, that, you, uh, that you've been doing um, with the Welsh Government. Yeah, thanks, Colin, and, and thanks for having me. Thanks for inviting me to, uh, uh, to talk. So, so yeah, my, my role, I'm an optometrist by, by, by background. I uh, um, uh, qualified from Glasgow Caledonian University uh, Far too many years ago for me to uh, to comment on now, um, but uh, my my role in Welsh government I. I work for Welsh Government for four days a week now. Uh, I started uh, that role uh, two years ago. Um, so I started a part-time basis uh, giving advice for two days a week. That has stepped up now to, to four days a week. So essentially my role is, uh, it, it is with primary uh, eye care in optometry and providing advice to Welsh Government around um, policy making decisions essentially. Uh, but as ever we, with any kind of eye care, the, the uh, divide across primary and secondary care needs to be bridged and so a lot of advice also relates to, to pathway changes and how optometry can uh, support ophthalmology uh, and the policy that needs to then go behind those decisions. So it's quite a varied role, it's a, it's a very exciting role and, uh, and one that uh, that we share with uh, with colleagues in Northern Ireland and in Scotland and, and we see uh, how change can be affected so so in essence that's uh, that's my role um, and, and I'm pleased to um, I'm pleased to support the Welsh Government in, in policy making. That's great David so nice to have some 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 background uh, so um, it, it has really been a, a, a very very um, difficult time I know everyone's had to uh, to adjust to, to different ways of working and, and it's presented all sorts of challenges um, and and I'd be really interested just to ask you really to um, to how, how Wales has um, coped with delivering eye services during the the, the pandemic. Yeah, I suppose it would help really if I gave you a little bit of, of a background about the services in Wales prior to, to the COVID-19 pandemic, because that really has shaped how we've been able to respond as a, as a nation. So uh, our eye care developments go back really to, to early 2000. So um, we, we've as all the nations have, we've always delivered general ophthalmic services in Wales. Um, the limitations of those general ophthalmic services were recognised by Welsh Government, as I say, going back to, to the early 2000s. And so we had the development of the Welsh Eye Care Services. So now in Wales today, we have uh, Wales Eye Care Services, which effectively are made up of the Eye Health Examination Wales Service, the Low Vision Service Wales, and the Diabetic Eye Screening Service. So our fundamental um, services that we provide and particularly the eye health examination Wales service really gives us the platform to the services that we have been provided during the, the COVID-19 pandemic. So the eye health examination Wales service um, has an acute element to it. You, you, you might have heard the, the PEARS uh, scheme referred to on, on many occasions. Well, well that developed in Wales. The, uh, uh, that, that was um, with uh, a pilot that was developed in Vale of Glamorgan. So we've had the, the PEARS scheme in Wales since uh, since 2000. So that provides that acute element of eye care, the, the um, ability for patients to access urgent care within Wales as part of the Eye Health uh, Examination Wales service. So as we moved, uh, as we progressed with the, with the pandemic and we moved on the um, on the 17th of March, from what was the uh, containment phase to the to the delay phase, the decision, uh, you know, as, as it was then across the UK, was taken in Wales to um, cease routine eye care and, and the delivery of routine eye care to to safeguard patients and and to prevent the the spread the spread of the the virus was was taken. So we moved to this urgent and essential eye care. Um, now at that time. Uh, the EU service then underpins that service. So the ability for our practitioners to provide urgent care was already there. It was already part, uh, part and parcel of, of the services that we offered in Wales. So it meant that all of our services could continue to provide um, uh, urgent and, and essential care. Um, GOS was, was suspended at that point. Routine appointments uh, were suspended, 
um, but we had the ability to provide that service. Our low vision service, which was uh, part of the Wales Eye Care Service, as that really services uh, the, vul the most vulnerable um, group uh, within the COVID-19 pandemic, and, and obviously we had to protect those. So that service was also suspended at that particular time, along with domiciliary services and the um, uh, the screening services that we've got in Wales. As I mentioned at the start, diabetic eye screening services do form part of the, the Wales Eye Care Services, um, and that uh, that was suspended. But as we've moved along the, the process and, and, and uh, looked at uh, some of the more vulnerable groups and, and balanced the risk of, of sight loss against the, uh, the risk of contracting COVID-19, uh, chains have been made to the diabetic eye screening service in Wales. We have identified that uh, a small cohort of, of patients and, and pregnant uh, patients come into this cohort um, are at more risk of, of developing uh, eye disease. And, and we've, we've managed to utilise our optometric practice to see those patients. So we have part of our uh, diabetic eye screening service up and running and we have um, practices uh, that are providing acute and uh, essential services. Uh, how that evolved then in Wales, uh, as I say, at the start of the process, we had the, uh, the move from containment to, to delay as we then moved into the lockdown phase. It wasn't possible to provide all of these services and, and we, we knew we had to rationalise the services across Wales um, and, and reduce uh, transmission rates and uh, contact rates. So the, the move then was to a more cluster based service. So in Wales we have 64 uh, primary care clusters that service the, the population health needs for, for their uh, local areas and lining uh, our eye care services to our cluster-based services has been a big advantage in Wales. So as I say, we've got 64 clusters. We wanted to ensure that we had eye care services aligned to each of those clusters. So we have at least one practice uh, and up to three practices within a cluster providing the, uh, providing the eye care services. So essentially it meant that some of our practices had to close and some of our practices remained open. And that was um, basically uh, determined by uh, the, the local health boards and the optometric advisors that we've got within our health boards, working with our regional optometric committees to, to ensure that we had that, that spread and that coverage of, of eye care services across Wales. So it's been a journey, it's been a, 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 a long process getting to where we are, but we, ha we, do have, um, we do have services in all our areas, we have good coverage across Wales, but underpinning that is, is the services that were provided prior to COVID-19 and our eye, healthcare, uh, our eye, eye, eye health care examination Wales service. Great, thanks David. I mean, it, it, it's been a challenge for everyone, hasn't it, to um, balance the, 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 the risk of, of sight loss with, with seeing patients safely. Um, and, and I'd be really interested to, to know what kind of role the, the optometrist in particular has, has, has played in, in um, these, these sort of clusters that, that you have. The, what, what, what have they been, been doing in their practices? Yeah, and that's a very good question. And I think we, we've, um, there's sort of two elements to this. And I've really got to pay tribute as well to the practices that haven't opened. You know, it's a big change for optometric practices and asking them to, to close and direct their patients to practices that are competitors within the market um, is a big change for the profession. So uh, tribute has to be paid to practices that have acted professionally and with integrity and have helped the process and support the NHS by closing the, the doors and directing patients to our hub practices that, that we have called them. Those practitioners that have been providing eye care services within the hub, now, now that's varied. As I say, it's underpinned by the Eye Health Examination Wales, and we've had this core acute um, uh, provision of services. Um, but what's really stepped up in Wales over the uh, over the process of the, the pandemic is the use of our independent prescribing optometrists. Um, and, and health boards have had the ability to commission local services. Um, independent prescribing has been a big part of this um, and has, we've seen particularly in Cardiff and, and uh, further west in, in Haldar, we have uh, independent prescribing optometrists that have been working within the health board and essentially uh, refining referrals that would have ordinarily have gone to eye casualty and being able to manage an awful lot of those uh, those patients. So we have services now in Wales that have seen a huge reduction in the number of, of patients going to our eye casualty uh, services in hospital. 
in addition to that, we've also seen a, a big uptake in the um, in our wet AMD services. Uh, again, prior to COVID-19, we did have practices and uh, locally commissioned services by our health boards where we've had refinement of um, wet AMD patients. So practices will see these patients and determine, you know, provide OCT scans and determine actually whether it's a true um, case of wet AMD and that patient needs to be seen rapidly. So we've seen an increase in the uptake of, of those type of services across Wales during the pandemic. So um, an increase in responsibility for practitioners, an increase in the work that they are, are doing, it's varied work, it's more specialised work, but they've certainly played a huge and important role in, in supporting uh, our ophthalmology services and, and reducing the demand on the NHS. Well, as an independent prescriber myself, I think it's it's great to hear that the the enhanced roles that they've been able to play within the 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 um, eye health care in in Wales, which which is great. Um, I mean, I think you may have answered this to a certain degree, but what are the things that you you think have have worked particularly well within the the service at the minute? As you say, I think that's you know the, the independent prescribing is, is certainly a, a, a big step. You know, we, we know in Scotland that we've had independent prescribers for some time, and the work that they've been doing, um, integrating that and, and putting it into the system in Wales that's linked to our cluster-based system, and integrating within that cluster-based system has been a big um, a, a big plus for uh, for how practitioners have worked. So I think the independent prescribing, that reduction in the number of referrals into eye casualty, has, has worked extremely well. I also think that uh, the structures that we've got in Wales have worked extremely well and it would be remiss of me not to to uh, to talk about the role of Optometry Wales and the role of the Welsh Optometric Committee and indeed our, our health board optometric advisors. So each of our health boards have optometric advice in place, providing in a similar way as I provide advice to Welsh Government, they provide advice to the, to the local health boards. The Welsh Optometric Committee uh, provides uh, direct advice to, to me and to Welsh Government and to the Ministers in Welsh Government. And Optometry Wales obviously advocates for the profession. So very early in the process, we set up a, a coordinated meeting um, bringing together all of these groups and indeed Health Education Improvement Wales with our clinical leads uh, within Health Education Improvement Wales. And, and we all meet on a, on a weekly basis at the start of the pandemic. It was a fortnightly basis. So actually bringing groups together that are then able to provide provide good quality advice and, and the agility to provide uh, and, and provide the advice to the profession quickly has been a big step forward in Wales and, and it's, it's with my thanks to Optometry Wales, the Welsh Optometry Committee and the Optometric Advisors that we've been able to uh, progress uh, and to be able to react to the situation as well. It, uh, it sounds like a great collaborative approach, really, doesn't it, uh, with everyone working together. But but I'm sure that there's been um, challenges as well. I mean, we've all heard about um, challenges, access to, to PPE. But so so how, how have the, the, the optometrists within the, uh, the clusters responded to that and dealt with with any other challenges that perhaps have cropped up? Uh, yes, that's a very good question. Uh, in terms of PPE, I think that that's a, a very valid question. And, and as well as government, I think this is one of the reasons that we went to, to a cluster based approach. We wanted to be able to ensure that our optometrists providing the care had the, the required PPE. So Welsh government have been providing the PPE to our practices to, to date. Um, and, and as we move out into to other phases, there will be consideration as to how we can continue to do that. But the PPE has been provided for our optometric practices. They haven't had to, to go and source that um, and it's, it's been a big um, positive in, in terms of how they can provide the service. Um, there are lots of challenges, we, you know, and, and there will be a lot of challenges to come. We don't know what's around the corner with with, with potential next waves of the uh, of the virus, and so there will be continuing challenges. One of the challenges, and I think certainly with with um, uh, independent prescribing, it, but also with with the provision of of urgent eye care and the way that. Um, practices and practitioners have had to adapt is that there is a lot of isolation there you know the our practitioners are used to working as teams with with our dispensing opticians and with our practice support staff and um, a lot of the practitioners are working alone now you know it's a closed door policy that that we have in Wales and, and uh, patients are triaged prior to uh, to having an appointment and often that will mean that the optometrists are working alone and, and in terms of, of our independent prescribers this is a big step up in terms of what they're doing you know where there's there's more complex conditions that they are managing and, and whilst having the training and, and adequate process to do that actually being thrown into a situation and working in isolation is very difficult to do so 
it's a big challenge and we've worked hard with our optometric advisor and with our ophthalmology teams in Wales to ensure that those practitioners have got the support uh, that they need when, when assessing patients in this difficult time. So I'm sure there'll be lots more um, challenges to face, but you know, the way that the profession has worked professionally and, and with integrity and uh, have met the challenges. You know, I spoke to one of our practitioners down in, in West Wales last week who really has enjoyed the challenge of, of, of seeing the more difficult cases. Um, but it's ensuring that we've got the support around them in that time of isolation where they're not used to working alone. It's it's really interesting, isn't it, that um, you know practitioners are rising to to the, the the challenge of seeing more complex cases. They're stepping up and they're, and they're dealing with it, which is which is which is fantastic. But I, I suppose maybe looking forward, and, and I mean again, you've probably already said it's difficult to know just quite what the future holds. But um, ha, have you thought about how services might resume during the the, the coming sort of phases of the pandemic? Uh, we we have and and you know recently you, you may well have seen that the Welsh government provided a, a recovery document uh, an action plan as, as to we, we move from the the red phase that we're currently in into the into the amber phase of of, uh, of recovery and, and a lot of thought has gone around that I think the ultimate thought is that safety is the paramount feature you know we we have to be safe for for patients and the population that we serve for our practitioners our, our eye care practitioners and the practice staff that we have so um over overall theme will be with caution as we as we move forward you know this is uh, there are unprecedented times and we have to be safe and careful in everything in everything that we do um we do have a backlog of patients in optometry we do have a backlog of patients in secondary care and, and there is a balance to as to how we we then can deal with this um as we move into the next stage um attention will have to be paid to social distancing which inevitably reduces the number of patients that will be coming through the door at, at any one time in our practice um and we have to we have to balance that and and part of balancing that will be the prioritization of patients um in, in wales particularly we already run on a prioritization scheme in in secondary care um so we have risk factors assigned to all of our patients and, and we should be looking at something similar in in uh primary care optometry, we, we have to ensure as part of prudent health care that those patients at greatest risk are seen first. Um, and, and that will be a challenge as we come into the into the next phase, you know, opening up these practices, enabling uh, a return to uh, GOS site tests, uh, enabling that return to the wider eye health examination whale service and indeed the low vision service. We have to be careful, we have to be prudent in the way that we do that and prioritising our patients I think will be a, an essential step as to how we look to manage our backlog safely as we go forward. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, the more practices that open, practitioners have to feel safe. The patients have to have confidence in, in the, the optometric profession as well to deliver a, a safe a safe service. So um, challenges, but also maybe opportunities. Uh, have you have you maybe had a think about what, what opportunities might be presented in future? Absolutely. And, and I think one of the, the, the biggest aspects of, of the pandemic is that ability to pause and reflect on what has worked well over previous years and, and what what are the vision for our future eye care services really is you know and, and supporting that wider NHS um, having the emphasis on eye health care so there are some real opportunities here to embed some of the work that has been happening over the uh, over the last few months embrace some of the technology that we've used um, and the, the, the uh, Teleoptometry, um, and video conferencing has, has all been utilised extremely well by our practices, and, and we've got to look at how we embrace that and, and embed that as part of our normal practice. We mustn't go back to doing things that um, didn't add value. Um, you know, parts of, of what we do, we have to look at and did they add value to uh, to the eye health of our population, um, to the uh, advancement of the profession. And we mustn't go back to doing things that didn't add value. Um, we must look to how we can embed the practice that has worked. I've talked about IP and, and different pathways and, and how that eye health uh, aspect is, is important to, to, to the way we go forward. Embedding that in our, in our NHS and the pathways really is an opportunity going forward for us. Yeah, I mean, I think that there's always opportunities, even in the the sort of darkest cloud. Um, there, there's always a always a silver lining. And, and maybe, uh, do you think there's any lessons that um, could we we could be learning from this that uh, we could build on for the future? 
Uh, yes, abs absolutely. And and, uh, and as I said before, it, it'll be very interesting. I, I don't I don't think we are uh, at the end point of this, and I think we have to remain cautious. And there will still be learning to uh, to to happen through the next phase of, of the pandemic. Um, I think we, we have to learn from um, the pathways that, that we have embedded. I think it's certainly how um, integrated our independent practitioners are within our pathways is a huge learning curve. It would be wrong for us not, not to learn that. Um, but, but going forward, I think we have to learn how we uh, work as a uh, as a profession. You know, I think what one of the, as I said, the big factors that has helped us is how quickly we've been able to come together in, in Wales. I think there's huge learning, learning curves there and how we interact as a profession, both with each other, but within our primary care clusters in Wales, how we interact with our GPs, with our pharmacies, uh, and embedding and, and helping that wider NHS as we go forward. One of the, the really positive things that has, has come out of COVID-19, and I've talked about practices that were closed those practices that were closed the optometrists have been helping you know they've not sat there and sat at home and, and, and twiddled their thumbs and, and not done anything uh, we've had optometrists that have been delivering prescriptions in wales and how we interact with our colleagues in primary care and and support that wider nhs structure you know they, it's, it's something for us to to learn from and, and to take forward in the roles that we do and, and how we deliver eye care in the future David, it's been really great to, to hear your um, thoughts and, and insights and maybe your your hopes from, for the future as well. But uh, it, it, it's, I think, always, always great when people come together and work um, to try and do the best for, for the patients. And it sounds like you've, you've, you've had that with uh, the optometrist you've been working with in, in Wales. So um, thanks very much for, you, for your time. And um, uh, as, as everyone's saying at the minute, stay safe. Pleasure. Stay safe, Colin. Thank you. Thanks.